Hello and welcome to today's lesson. Today we're going to be reviewing what we did last in class. And when we were last in class, we were talking about a right triangle. And in a right triangle, if we know, let's just say one leg or one side, if we know the length of this side, and we know an angle measure, we can also find out what the other lengths of the other angle and the other sides are. So we were using sine, cosine, and tangent. So the first one that we were working with was the tangent. And we're always taking the tangent or we're taking the ratio of an angle. And then it is a ratio. Now the ratio for tangent, so tangent of an angle, the ratio is what we would say is the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So from the tangent of A, the opposite leg is going to be BC, and the adjacent leg is AC. And sometimes people call that TOA, so that tangent is opposite over adjacent. So let's try a couple sample problems here. So I would like for you to stop the video right now, set these up, and then try and find your answer to make sure that you know what you're doing and then resume your video. All right, so we're going to take the tangent of an angle and the angle we know is 28. So the tangent of 28 is the opposite, which is 13, over x. All right, so I think I showed you before how to solve these, and we always solve these by using cross multiplication. So we're going to cross multiply this. So this is going to be x times the tangent of 28 is 13. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have to divide by this tangent of 28 on both sides. And then these will cancel, and so you're ending up with x equals the 13 divided by the tangent of 28. And every time this happens, where you have the x or the variable on the bottom, these two basically just switch places. So we are going to take 13 and divide by the tangent of 28. And for this, we're going to get, if we round to the nearest tenth, we are going to get 24.5. Number two, the tangent of 39 is the opposite x over 22. So now when we solve these, we just cross multiply. So we're going to take 22 times the tangent of 39. 22 tangent 39 and I got 17.8. All right, there's one more problem here for you to try. All right, so stop the video, give this one a try and make sure that you know how to do this. So we're going to set up the tangent of 46 is the opposite 4 over x. Now this is like that first one, so these two are basically just going to switch places, and we're going to take 4 and divide by the tangent of 46. So 4 divided by tangent of 46, and I'm getting 3.9 when we round to the tenth. All right, the other two concepts that we talked about were sine and cosine. So the sine of an angle is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, and then the cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we called this so, S-O-H, ca, C-A, H was our short acronym. All right, so let's give a couple of these a practice try. Oh, before we do that, we're going to talk about sine and cosine of complementary angles. So the sine of A is going to be the cosine of 90 minus A, which is the cosine of B. 
So the sine of A and the cosine of B are going to give you the same thing. So that when they ask a question, write sine of 56 in terms of cosine. What that means is cosine of 90 minus 56. And 90 minus 56, so the cosine of 34 is going to be the same thing as the sine of 56. Those two values, if you take those two values and find out what they are, they are going to be the exact same thing and you're going to get the decimal like 0.829. Oops, we missed a problem in here. Where'd it go? Okay, so in this problem here when we're doing sine, cosine, and tangent, so what we have to do here is they want us to find the sine, oops, the sine of S. So if we start at S, the side opposite, that ratio is going to be 63 over your hypotenuse is 65. So there's the answer as a fraction. Now they want this as a decimal. So we're gonna take 63 and divide by 65, and they want four places. So we're gonna have 0.9692. All right, then the second one they want is the sine of r. So if we go r, the sine would be opposite 16 over the hypotenuse 65. So 16 divided by 65 is going to be 0 0.2462. So if they want you to go to four places, this is really a 1, 5, and because this is a 1, let's look at that 5. So that's going to make it go up, and that's why we have the 2. All right, the cosine of S. Cosine of S. Cosine of S is adjacent over hypotenuse. So 16 divided by 65 is going to be this same decimal, which is 0.2462. So these two are going to be the same, which is what we were just talking about when we did this. The sine of 56, the same thing of that is the cosine of 34. And that's what we are doing right now. So the sine of R and the cosine of S are going to be the same values. All right, and then the last one, the cosine of R is going to be, so the cosine of R is adjacent 63 over 65. And you can see the sine of S and the cosine of R are the same thing. So this decimal value would be 0.9692. All right, there's two more things I wanna make sure that we go over. I just gotta find where I put them in here. All right, so here we go. Finding X and Y using sine and cosine. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna do the sine of 26. So the sine of 26 is opposite over hypotenuse. So now to solve this, I'm going to take 14 times the sine of 26. And 14 times the sine of 26, when we round this, I believe we get a 6.1. Let me just double check that. 14 sine 26, 6.1. All right, so you should definitely be stopping this and trying this before you um, go through these answers. So now they want to find out why. Well, what is why in relation to this? This is the side adjacent, okay, and where you have the hypotenuse. So what ratio is that? Well, that's going to be the cosine of 26 is adjacent over your hypotenuse of 14. So now we're going to take 14, cosine 26, and I'm getting the decimal value of 12.6.
All right, and then the last concept or problem that I want to review today is going to be something like finding the sine and the cosine of a 45 degree angle. So they don't just want you to grab your calculator and take the sine of 45. They want this written as a ratio. And so some of you are thinking, well, we don't have a triangle right now. Okay, well, let's think about this. We did special right triangles before. And so if this is a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle with it right, we know this side is congruent to that side. Now you can pick any number that you want. So I'm just going to pick five. So if that's five, this is five. Now remember the ratios in a 45, 45, 90, what is the length of this hypotenuse? And remember, we take that leg times root 2. So now, if we want to set up, the sine of 45 is going to be opposite, which is 5, over 5 root 2. All right, now we know we can't have a radical on the bottom, so I'm going to multiply by root 2 over root 2. Now, these 5s cancel. And what I end up with is root 2 over 2. Now, no matter what number I picked, this is exactly what's going to happen. So the sine of a 45-degree angle as a ratio is root 2 over 2. Now, if they want you to do the decimal, then all you have to do is hit sine 45, and it will give you that decimal value, and the decimal value would be like 0 0.707. So make sure you're writing it as a ratio or as the decimal value what they're asking for. All right, so let's just do this last one, 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this would be your 30, this would be your 60. So if I call this side 4, remember in the special right triangle, if this is 4, your hypotenuse is 8, and then your long leg would be 4 root 3. So if we do the sine of 30, okay, so let's start at 30. Sine would be opposite 4 over your hypotenuse 8. So we are going to get 1 half. So the sine of 30 is going to be 0.5. Now if they want it as a ratio, they don't want 0.5, they want 1 half. So then the cosine of 30, cosine of 30 is adjacent, which would be 4 root 3 over your hypotenuse 8. So now if we simplify this, 4 goes into 8 twice, so we're going to get root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2. All right, so that should be a quick review of your sine, cosine, and tangent. Trying to find all of those, setting up the ratios, using your 30, 60, 90, what those ratios are. And then also, if I say write sine in terms of cosine, remember that they are complementary to each other. So if I say the sine of 30, then the cosine of 60, because these are complementary, will give you the same answer. Alrighty, it is ready for your homework, so you should have some homework ready for you. Alright, good luck.